It's one of Australia's most important wetlands. We're at uh, Lake Cowell in central west New South Wales. It's located in the triangle between West Wyalong, Forbes and Condoblin. It is an ephemeral wetland, so sometimes it's completely dry, but in flood times it's just a hive of activity with birds, reptiles, fish, frogs and a whole range of other species. Our family uh, had a property on the western shore of Lake Cal over a couple of generations. When you, you know, work in this environment, you grow up in the environment, uh, it's very important to you. It's not a well-known site, so visitation to Lake Cal itself, it might be, you know, maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred people a year, and that might do. So from here to the end is probably about 21 kilometres and about 10 kilometres across. It's New South Wales' largest natural inland lake, so it's an area of about 13,500 hectares. Once the water uh, gets up to, well, that large river egg gum there, it starts flooding over into Narangkal, which is a smaller lake, which is nearly 8,000 hectares, and it all becomes one. In terms of the environment, it's very exciting just because of the activity. It's one of those boom-bust ecosystems, so you see all the stages develop uh, and all the species take off. The entire area, woodland and wetland birds, we have 277 species recorded here. We've got all three species of ibis, so we have the Australian white ibis, the straw-necked ibis and the glossy ibis. We have the great egret and the intermediate egret and we've also sighted a good number of cattle egrets. In terms of the ducks, we have grey teal, chestnut teal, Australasian shovelers, bloom whistling ducks, black swans, pelicans. We've got particularly large numbers of whiskered terns and also black winged stilts at the moment. I haven't seen the stilts in the numbers there in my lifetime, so uh, that's something different. One of the most exciting things for a lot of people at the moment is that we have some Australasian bitterns here, which is one of our endangered species. In particular, the migratory birds we have here at the moment, the uh, magpie geese coming down from the Northern Territory, a number of nests just in around this little area here. That's why they're coming in on this dam here. The sharp-tailed sandpipers are coming down from subarctic Siberia, Latham snipe from Japan, and uh, the whiskered terns, you know, they're coming down from Indonesia and those parts of the world, so it's very important. All of the invertebrate species, the little water bugs, they're the things that drive the food chain. What else can I find? Oh, this one over here. If you were to go down and look at a sample of water now, you'd see that it would just be teeming with a whole range of different water bugs from uh, bloodworms through to uh, damselflies. They're pretty cool. They're a real indicator of uh, very good water health. You can see by the response in the birds that um, it is a good system. You've got a range of habitats here from fairly open mud flats through cane grass beds. Uh, there's substantial cane grass beds stretching for many kilometres. In the northern end of the lake you have uh, lignum, which is very important for a number of species in terms of, well, habitat to hide in and feed in, but also for breeding. So it's got a full suite of uh, habitats that water birds require. Just ahead of us here we've got uh, probably about a thousand grey teal or more uh, just sitting on the water settling in. We've also got some uh, black winged stilts. We'll see what happens when we get over a bit closer. It's good to see, it's good to watch it. Uh, it's changing every day and every week. 
according to the way the habitat's changing in response to the climate and the weather system. So from here on in, uh, as the weather warms up, uh, the lake water level will change quite quickly. So that as that happens, the species of birds that are here will change as the uh, food sources diminish or some other species will thrive.